your lifestyle means that you're going to change something in it. So change to fix your own food. Change to do things more as a family. Well, we went from winter, spring, summer. <laughs> and it's hot today. And I saw the forecast. And it looks like a solid week of sun. But I thought I wanted to show you how well these birds were doing, these little ones. And if they don't get off right now, see them roosting on their their little roosts. They they really like those roosts. I'm so glad we gave it to them because it's a natural thing for them. And they really, really like it. They're in the shade right now, and they have been. So that's good. The other ones are not in the shade. Hi, little ones. So I know for large production, um, that Joel Salatin uses, I think, 75 in his his carriers that he has, and you know they're bigger. And um, John Suskovich puts 30 in his, and we actually had 35 in these last time, and it was just way, way, way too much. I'm loving that we have 17 in each. I think we could easily get by with 20 in each. Um, it's it's more conducive to that for me. If I'm on a large scale like they are and I'm trying to make lots of money with it, then absolutely it's, you know, do something like that. But I'm not large scale. I'm trying not to be large scale. We have um, 34 birds and we've sold 20 of them so far. And um, we have another six weeks to go. So hopefully they'll all be sold by the time they're that big and if not then more get to go in our freezer and and that's always a blessing so i just wanted to check in with them and make sure they had enough water we um ran out of water with one of them this morning this uh turned the water got turned let me make sure it's okay right now Last thing we need him to do is run out of water in this heat. I hear some chopping over here. I'm gonna go find my husband. We have hazelnut trees and it's a race to see who gets the nuts, us or the squirrels. They're not in yet, but they're coming. Wow, you're like cutting down a forest here. <laughs> They're pretty trees, aren't they? Yeah. We have blue, um, we have blackberries growing up in the tree. Um, blackberries grow here. And over there we have apple trees and you can go up and pick the apples and the blackberries at the same time because they just weave right up into it. Okay, it's, it's time for some, what, what, what do you call it? Emotional wellness. <laughs> I need an emotional moment. Uh, Gonna go down to a fish. the river where it's peaceful and calm and just not worry about anything and throw a spinner out and let it go through the water and just listen to the birds. And I have a chair and a book. It'll be good. And the camera in case I think of anything wonderful to and say. In case I hook into the big one. There you go.
fishing, I was reading to him. So that's one of our favorite things to do is read to each other. And I'm reading actually from this brand new book that I uh, talked about getting the other day. And it's from Deborah Neiman. And she uh, was one of the speakers at the Home Grown Food Summit. And she spoke on the guardian animals. Anyway, she has this wonderful book called Home Grown and Handmade. And I'm reading the introduction to it. And she's talking about a lot of the things from the corporations that where they, um, do you have a fish? You got a rock. Okay. If you had a fish, I was going to turn around. Um, a lot of the corporations that are responsible for big business, poor food, all of those kind of things. And one of the things that she was talking about, she was talking about how advertisers sell a concept saying, you, your time is too valuable. You are too busy to cook. You are too busy to sew. You are too busy to make things yourself. And they, she made mention of the um, ad that won the ad of the year or something, you deserve a break today. And then she says, advertisers know they are not selling the most nutritious or delicious food out there. They are selling a lifestyle. You deserve to have someone else cook for you. So I have two things to say about that. Number one, when we decide in the evening we're too busy, I mean too tired to cook, it's an immediate 20 to $40 for that dinner. 20 to $40, that's ridiculous. So the other night, we were like, oh, we're so tired, and it's Father's Day tomorrow. We deserve this. And I says, oh, why don't I just go get some eggs and make some scrambled eggs and toast? <laughs> Only we didn't. We went down and ordered a pizza of all things. And we ordered a Mediterranean pizza with all these vegetables. And I took some of my chicken and put on it because it was a bring home and bake. But it wasn't good. We both kind of got sick from it, and we spent $20 we didn't have. I mean, we should, didn't, we had, but we didn't need to spend. So even when we know we shouldn't, sometimes we still do. So we made a pact to each other after both of us didn't feel good after we ate it, that we will call each other down, shout each other out in a loving way. You know, remember, do you want to be sick? Let's just go make something together. And that's much better to make something together. Number two in my uh, thing that I got, what I got from this reading. When they say they're selling a lifestyle, you deserve to have someone else cooking for you. We sell a lifestyle. Hardiness approach is a lifestyle. Our whole theme for this 180 days is 180 degree lifestyle change in 180 days and we are on 112 days lifestyle change your lifestyle means that you're going to change something in it so change to fix your own food change to do things more as a family, change to exercise more, change to come down and sit by the river, and watch your husband fish so that you can unwind and relax, change to grow your own food. That's a lifestyle change, not the lifestyle change that you deserve so that you don't have to cook anything and you can go eat processed food and get sick from it. There, got on my soapbox again. Sorry.